I know what all of you are thinking. What are you thinking of this title? I thought you use Linux. We see Linux in most of your desktop. What what's the big deal? Uh there are some Linux distros I cannot stand. I I hate like a lot of people um I'm not going to name names especially on YouTube. They love to put forth a lot of Linux distros say this is the best Linux distro for XYZ whatever whatever. Um so first, I'm only going to talk about desktop. And uh now I understand this video might get me in trouble. Um, I know some Linux use Linux users, whatever whatever users means, uh, are so biased they'll berate other YouTubers into participating in challenges. They are challenges they're illy prepared to even do. I made a list of the top most hated Linux distros I could think of, and I'm going to make this even broader. This is going to be categories of distros you should not use, and I think this is a good. A good template into understanding uh, the, my mentality, at least using a Linux distro. Here's number one. My number one uh, on this list is distros with opt-out telemetry. What does that mean? Uh, you have to understand that one of the benefits Linux provides as an operating system is uh, it has the ability to offer you privacy. Opt-out telemetry means that in order for you to not have it, the user needs to opt out of it. So by default, the operating system needs to track you. Obviously, because Linux is Linux, you can do things to remove such telemetry. Uh, and that is a good segue. The first just we made a video about Ubuntu collecting telemetry about people and how to remove it. Ubuntu is guilty of this. I can't stand this. The fact that Ubuntu tracks you by default, and even if you say no, still tracks you, is disgusting. I can't, I can't even wrap my head around it. I mean, granted, uh, with Ubuntu, uh, it could be a lot worse. You know, it, it could be, you could be using Windows, you could be using Mac OS, like you could be using a Chromebook, the worst option of all. Zorin OS. Yes, there is a package in the popular beginner Linux distribution, Zorin OS which allows them to track their users. It's a package called Zorin OS Census. Yes, they track you by default. They and like Ubuntu, they claim to anonymize your information. But what you don't know what these this one man distro is really doing with your information. You can't seriously trust some some random guy with the but, information. It's crazy. But their website says make your computer better period. What could possible how could they possibly be lying? Let's get into some of the ones that are... Let me get into two Linux OSs that are don't follow this. At least of Zorin OS and Ubuntu, right? Uh, you can remove the telemetry from it or suppress to such a degree that it's non-existent, right? But let's get into some of the ones that are... This sort of telemetry is a problem. Deep in OS. Yes, the Deep in OS, the creators of the Deep in desktop environment, is um, created by some Chinese company I don't know the name of. I can't read Chinese. However, they have a deal to make you sign a EULA when you use the OS so that you sell your soul to the CCP. Wow, this is exactly what I want in my operating system. They are also caught implementing analytics into their store. The, they were using the Chinese equivalent of Google Analytics, CNZ, CNZZ. Stupid. Oh my gosh. This is one of Deepin is probably one of the worst operating systems you can run. I don't want to make any statements of Deepin desktop environment. If you like it, great. But there are billions of other ways to use it than using Deepin itself. You can use you can use something like Fedora. You can use Arch. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. Well, let me get into one of the worst Linux distros with opt-out telemetry. That one is Rumroll, please. Steam OS. Yes, it requires an account for you to do anything, period. Just like a Chromebook. Wow. This is exactly what I want out of my Linux distro. Did you know Valve can also track you and has made it harder for you to run cost custom operating systems on it? And how do you install a different OS on your Steam Deck, you might ask? By logging into your Steam account and enabling developer mode. Wow. Ha 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 ha. Not even Deepin mm. went that far. <laughs> Yeah, I don't I don't like that. I, I agree with that. Having to log in in order to opt out is ridiculous. 
being required to have the thing that you don't want to have in order to opt out is ridiculous. And this is why, kids, you don't use distros with telemetry. This is why I didn't buy a Steam Deck. Well, this is why we as the consumers should push back against the practice. Because it's one thing to say for at least me on the other end of the, the more consumer-minded individual. I think that there is a difference between a company opting you in and encouraging the average person to do something and a company literally making it impossible for you to do something or, or making it so difficult to do it that no reasonable person can do so. Like creating a Windows 11 account without a Windows login. Yes, you can do it, but the number of hoops you have to jump through in order to do it is so ridiculous that the average person isn't going to. And that's too far. This is why you don't use opt-out telemetry. All right, let's roll into the second one. Number two, distros, which freeze security updates on you or are really slow to patch them. And I need to talk about this one because this is there are some Linux distributions that are incredibly guilty about or not providing security updates in a timely manner is everyone's favorite alleged newbie distribution, Manjaro. They freeze Arch packages for two weeks. That means you don't get security updates, except for stuff they whitelist, for two weeks. Good luck getting updates. Desktop Linux distributions. You have no excuse. And funny, I'll th this isn't even a problem that Manjaro has had in the past. One time, one of their certificates expired, and what was their solution to getting around the certificate? Just wind your clock back when the certificate was valid. Ooh, that's not that's not a good solution. That's a that's a awful solution, Manjaro team. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Don't even get me started on the can of worms that is beginner users should not be using Arch Linux, but whatever. All right, right. And the third one, right. This is one that really bugs me. I know this is gonna this one's gonna rattle some people's bones when I say it. The first two didn't rattle people's bones already. Let me get into the third one. I hate people running Debian as a desktop operating system because <gasps> heretic blasphemer. This is and I'm talking about both Debian stable and Debian testing, mind you. Uh, both of them are late with security updates because Debian need wants has the delusion that they need to test everything so so finely and minutely because we have millions and billions of servers out in the world and we need to keep those stable but when it comes to desktop users you need to get your stuff instantly remember and i remember a few years ago uh there were five years ago there was a leak in, G in gnome 28 uh where there was a memory leak in the desktop environment so it would just perpetually use two gigs of ram when it didn't need to when did debian fix that three years later you, you kidding me? This is the kind of delusion that I'm talking about. They think that, well, we need to, we need to preserve my, st my stability, and uh, what if an update breaks something? When you install something on Debian, you're installing the version of something of X program, of whatever was frozen in time. Let's use LibreOffice, for example. Right? Uh, the current version of LibreOffice in Debian Bullseye is not the same version of LibreOffice that's the same rolling release version of LibreOffice that's given to Windows users or Mac users or people with rolling release Linux distros or people with like cutting edge Linux distros. You will never see that in Debian. And those versions of LibreOffice might have nice things like updated Word documents, better PowerPoint support, new features in LibreOffice Calc or Base. No. You don't get any of those features. You'll get them in three years like everyone else. Are you kidding me? Plus, the, de the gall of Debian to say, we can back, we have the ability to use our siphon, our large community user base, to backport security updates into old versions of software. It's like, guys, you could just use the new versions of the software and it will just work with the updates. Number three. And I want to talk about this because this is a severe problem that I'm seeing spread through a lot of Linux YouTube outlets, okay? Libre-only Linux distributions. Now, hear me out. I like free software. I like software freedom and open source software. Really, I do. Uh, but the problem is the, there are some things, security fixes, that need to be done to proprietary software. You know, 
Just a few weeks ago, Lenovo released firmware updates to their BIOS because their proprietary BIOS needed to get updated. And so Intel, with their microcode during Windows Patch Tuesday, uh, which is second Tuesday of every month, would you get those fixes if you're on a Libre-only distribution? No. No. You don't get them. No security fixes for you. Because it's proprietary. Why would you need to update your proprietary, your proprietary software, your proprietary firmware? You couldn't possibly be using anything like that. And what even annoys me more is these people do it under the the pure the under the they have this sort of like they have this sort of like Slytherin esque purist philosophy where they're just like oh we need to we need to we, we we're just so pure we can never allow just a little blob of proprietary software to get anywhere. But what they do is they package in dumb stuff like insecure forks of Firefox or whatever, which you can't actually don't get meaningful updates for and don't get they don't get meaningful updates for. read this article here from adrian connell about the relationship with firmware arms the open source movement and the free software movement as a whole and why they don't secure their users because they prioritize their philosophy over people's security which is and stupid. i would argue that that philosophy is counter to encouraging open source software because by being so stalwartly against proprietary software you're removing the ability to use proprietary software so hard pass on those stupid Libre distributions. That means no Trisquel, no Parabola. I ain't using them. I ain't gonna do it. This is a, for the, this article by the Debian repos. I believe is incredibly important. This is from Debian's actual developers, and I know I just, I just, un, I just unleashed a lot of hate on Debian. Please hear me out, okay? Uh, I cannot stand Frankenstein Linux distributions. But what does that mean? Frankenstein distribution is a distribution which mixes repositories between the old and stable software and the bleeding edge software. Don't make a Franken Debian, which means combining Debian releases with other Debian releases. Now, what, 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 exactly, do, what exactly does that mean, right? Uh, what, you use PPAs? PPAs are the very thing which cause Frankenstein distributions. Never use Ubuntu's PPAs because it causes problems, right? And the fact that you even have to commit some of this patchwork to use secure versions of software in Debian or newer versions of stuff in Debian is crazy when you think about it. So really, it's kind of hypocritical if you think about it. Whatever. Let's play play along with it here because I think there's some some truth. That's true. That's there's some there's some truth to this, right? Uh, Ubuntu is another great. Is well, Ubuntu is not a good example. I don't think a better one. Linux Mint. Yes, the Linux Mint. Linux by the, the, the guy from Warframe. Linux Mint has this problem where they have a bleeding edge version of Cinnamon, Cinnamon Desktop and their own applications, but the rest of their operating system is based on Ubuntu or Debian, which causes them to mix versions of frozen in time software like Ubuntu or Debian compared to normal versions of their software. I found this fork of Linux. I, I have never actually learned uh, anything about it, um, but I want to throw it out here. Called uh, Unofficio Zero Linux. I actually cannot read any of this um, because, at, no, I, I didn't want to comment. I can't read any of this. It's written in Italian, so I can't actually, I, I don't know Italian. I'm, I'm going in dark, the dark here. Officio Linux. Is a fork of Linux Mint. Is a fork of Ubuntu and a fork of Debian. All of what? How can you do this? Look at all these. Look at all of these. Like this is a fork. Think about this one in particular, right? The fork of Linux Mint. This means that Officio Linux is a fork of Linux Mint, which itself is a fork of Ubuntu, which Ubuntu is a fork of Debian. So it's a fork of a fork of a fork of a fork. Why would I go through all of this trouble when I could just use Ubuntu or Debian? Because you could just fork Ubuntu or Debian. <laughs> My, 
Wow. Why don't Why don't you fork this distro? Hmm. These forks and are fork a, this distro. But these forks are exactly the problems that being talks about here. Don't make Franken distros. It hasn't got mentioned yet, but a lot of Linux YouTubers always, 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 always look over this one. I cannot stand one man or small team Linux distributions. I hate them. I hate them for burning passion. Everyone loves to flaunt around the Linux distribution. Arco Linux. Want to go find Arco Linux? Arco Linux info. The website looks like it was made in like 2009. The problem distributions like Arco Linux is distributions like Arco Linux are maintained by one guy. What if that one guy decides to issue a malicious thing through his repository? Well, you're out of luck. Maybe you should get a new operating system. Isn't SSH maintained by like one guy? But the difference between SSH and something like Arco Linux is a huge one. And that's this. Eyes on software. Eyes on so an open source software is huge because if no one is looking at your thing, <coughs> Arco Linux, no one is looking at your thing, uh, you could have millions of problems and no one even knows. As opposed to SSH, which is also an open source project, probably maintained by one guy, is actively used by millions of people around the world and has all sorts of eyes on it because everyone wants to break into servers. Including big companies that have a vested interest in making sure SSH isn't compromised. Exactly. This is why you can't use, you need to have eyes on your software. If you're using one-off projects like Arco Linux or distributions maintained by just one guy or a small team of people, if no one is looking at your distribution, your distribution might as well just be proprietary. I don't care if you're open source. In fact, maybe your distribution, you might not be more secure because you're just obscuring the code, but you know, it might honestly be better than, than you just making it open source in a weird sort of way. Whereas, as opposed to, you're using a distro like, like, you know, like, that people know about, like Ubuntu, or Dora, or uh, Arch Linux, or whatever, right? You're using a more mainstream distro. I know Linux users want to be the hip kids who want to be using something different, but guys, if you want to use a secure Linux distro, and you want to use a distro that's going to treat you well, you're going to use a distro with a big audience. Lots of eyes looking at it. In summary, you've hated on all of the distros under the sun that exist. So what distro do you condone that you do think is doing it right? I'm glad you asked. I clickbaited everyone. I'm sorry. I have to do this. This is how ever the internet works. Okay. Uh, let's go into the final point. Which distro would I actually use? Distro number one. Distro, I recommend to new Linux users, just use Fedora. If you don't like the GNOME desktop environment, that's totally okay. Because the Fedora project uh, has these things uh, called spins. And these spins are variants of Fedora with different desktop environments. Look, we got KDE. We got XFCE, we got LXQT, and Mate, and Cinnamon, and LXDE, and even i3, the i3 window manager. Fedora is a, is a cutting-edge distro. They will always give you security updates. There's an update every other day, because that's how it should be. There's always stuff changing. There are bugs to be fixed, security problems out there, enhancements that need to be made, Fedora is also long-standing, one of the old, longest Linux distros around. They're also the basis for uh, Red Hat, the, the more like the testing bed for Red Hat. And uh, the stability of Red Hat distros is unparalleled. In my experience, I have never found a better distribution with, the be with NVIDIA drivers. The NVIDIA drivers in Fedora are like, mwah, perfect. I have never, I have never experienced a single problem with an NVIDIA driver on Fedora. That wasn't caused by, that was caused by them. Uh, most of, most of, I need to say, uh, NVIDIA has caused me numerous problems, but not, not, nothing, nothing they did though. Fedora is also, is also a, I don't know, the best way to describe it is it is a semi-rolling Linux distribution. And what do I mean by a semi-rolling Linux distribution? Let me crack open a VM and ruin my computer some more, shall we? <laughs> Uh, 
we crack open. I'm gonna crack. This is going to be the XFCE spin. Zora, you can see I've upgraded this one, this VM, numerous times. It's actually from uh, it started as 33, and I've updated successfully to 35. You can see I've gone all whole hog on all this. But one of the reasons why you use Fedora is because the of this of its release model, right? Uh, if you need stability, you can wait six months to a year and keep keep getting newer versions of stuff, but still keeping in track with things, right? Um, I'm current. This is for this is currently running uh, Fedora 35, and you can actually see this if you just run a quick uname dash a. You can see it says FC 35. This is Fedora 35. If you and you get the traditional experience like you would with like a stable Linux distro where you have to wait go make a sandwich while your computer updates or whatever. So if you want a traditional stable-ish Linux experience with leading edge software, some of the best driver support and hardware support out there, uh, just use Fedora. You're you'll be in good hands. But this is not the only one that I want to package off the of. I know I clickbaited everyone of Arch Linux, but I want to let me be an advocate against the Arch Linux meme for a second. Right? Um, if you know what you're doing, Arch Linux makes the assumption you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, I am never going to recommend Arch Linux to you until you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, you shouldn't be using Arch Linux. You're not ready to go through the installation process. You, you can, I mean, you really, let me change that. You you really want to, I don't know, what, what what's something that people want from their repositories? But the problem, like Discord or whatever, I don't know, something, I don't know, Vivaldi. But like, you can get that stuff on other distros. And if you're not prepared to do reading, understand how people packaged, I don't know, the Surface, the Microsoft Surface DTX daemon made by one guy. If you don't know how to read any of this or vet like stuff, it's like, don't use AUR. If you don't know how to read those package builds, don't use AU. This is, again, this is what I'm saying. If you don't know what you're doing, don't use Arch Linux. If you know what you're doing, ignore everything I just said. You know what you're doing. Third one. This one actually is one. Th so third Linux distro. This one I feel like doesn't get enough attention. Open SUSE. Not Open SUSE Leap. Do not use Open SUSE Leap. They ship you old versions of garbage. Stuff. We're going to talk about this one. I want that I want that Arch Linux experience. I want a rolling release distribution. I don't want to be like Fedora and upgrade like every year and go with it through that waiting screen. I'm I don't want to go through that. And I will recommend that you check out OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. OpenSUSE Tumbleweed also has very good support because they replicate all the same work that uh, Fedora does and Red Hat does. In fact, they replicate it so much they use the same packaging format. They use uh, RPM, Red Hat Package Manager. Um, but one thing that OpenSUSE the Tumbleweed has that I think would help a lot of people who are new to Linux is the, the YAST settings menu. The YAST settings menu is possibly one of the most advanced GUI tools to interface with server and security tools and ways to configure your Linux distro that so many other distros are jealous of. Uh, when YAST first came out, it was innovative in how settings menus were designed on Linux because of how many options it presented people. And the amount of freedom and the amount of things you could do through it is crazy. And YAST is possibly one of the reasons why many people choose to use OpenSUSE. Uh, those are the three distros that I would recommend to people. First, you're a beginner Linux distro, distro user. You should use Fedora, right? Um, and this is where I would recommend start. Start learning some basics. Like, you know, if you're anyone tells you to do apt, apt Thing, just replace it with DMF. You'll you'll probably be fine, right? Same exact business. There, if you go to like popular websites, I'll throw this one out there. You use some go to something like Lutris to play your to play your video games. You want to consume product and play your video games. Uh, look at that. There's instructions specifically just for Fedora, because it is. And look, even for OpenSUSE too. Huh? huh that's funny. That's because you'll be fine. You're in good hands. Uh, and if you if you don't want to upgrade, if you don't want to have to sit through a loading screen every year, or if you feel more confident in yourself, you know you understand how to take advantage of things like ButterFS snapshots or pulling, rolling your system back or downgrading or whatever. You want just if you're a power user who wants just a little bit more control, I would push you towards OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. You get a you get a you get some great uh some great 
tools. Your always stuff is always going to be kept up to date. And you are, you are all going to have a rolling release distro that is vetted by its community. Uh, Arch, Linux, Arch Linux has sort of just pushes things on you and just says, good luck. But OpenSUSE has a middle wall, middleman in OpenQA where they will protect you from bad updates or whatever. Because people actually have to test something for it to get pushed out into Tumbleweed. Key takeaways. Don't use any of the distros and I've said in the last however many long this actually I said this for. Just use three distros. I think you'll be happy of all of them. Fedora, a tumbleweed, arch. But only use arch if you know what you're doing. Right? If you don't know what you're doing, just start with Fedora. Pretty easy. You'll get used to it. And if you don't like you don't like GNOME, you don't like how it looks, uh just just go to their spins.fedora.org. Go there. All of the distros, you get all the looks and designs that you could possibly want. It's been a long time. I know it's been a long time. I know this comes off as ranting, but I am, I watch people on YouTube and I, I can't help but say like, some of you guys, you're just making, you're just pushing poor life decisions on your poor viewers. You can't, these YouTubers, they're just out there pushing these poor decisions, poor life decisions on their users. Don't, don't end up like the, the tech tips man and, and go in not knowing anything because his audience is stupid. Please, 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 please. You just, just use those distros. Uh, like the video for more Linux rants. Uh, and also subscribe so you have another Linux YouTuber to consume product from. Spread this video around and let all those stupid hacker kids know their distro sucks.